It is 6.30 in the morning in sunny Iceland, and I have just landed with the only lens I need on this trip, the Samyang 35-150 to F2 to F2.8. And now, we're gonna get on a ferry, we're gonna go see some puffins. First, I wanna say thank you so much to Samyang for sponsoring this video. They didn't tell me what to do for this video, and I blew the entire budget coming here to Iceland to photograph puffins. Oh, and stay until the end, where I'm going to give you my number one secret for getting paid to travel, to go out there, and to live the life of your dream. All the photos you're gonna be seeing, in this video are from the Samyang 35 to 150. And also, all the B-roll you're going to see is also shot on this lens with the exception of if my face is in it and the camera's in it. Then it's, then it's not. I'm Taylor Jackson. I am primarily a wedding photographer from Canada, but I'm also into travel and video content. I worked at an Outback Steakhouse for eight years while also doing concert photography. And I eventually ended up going full time into weddings. One fun thing I learned as a concert photographer is that a large lens gets you into a lot of places that otherwise you might not have access to. This guy's gotta be good, right? Look at the size of his lens. And that sounds stupid, but that is the truth that I discovered in my real life. Look at that, my shadow waving in the B-roll. Beautiful. Some lens B-roll? Oh yeah, how's that? Here we have the lock, unlock button. So if you're traveling, it's not going to do that in your bag. Got some buttons here, custom one, two, and three. Autofocus, manual focus. Also check out this font. Was this font drawn by Mr. Samyang? Maybe, maybe not. Do we do, do, we do a walkie talkie with the, the, my full size tripod? When it comes to wedding and event coverage, it is my preferred focal length. I don't really go wider than 35 on a wedding day and 150 at the long end is more than good enough. And now we're gonna head to a spot just outside of Grindavik and get excited. I'm going to show you the true versatility of this lens from 35 to 150. Let me show you what 35 to 150 looks like. Let's begin out here. Sorry, I have to go a little further away from the camera. All right, here we are at 35. I'm also not using ND. We'll do this properly soon. And zooming in all the way to 150, there you go. Those are your two frames. You get this one and you get that one. Pretty nice, right? Now, when you go into APS-C crop mode, all of a sudden you can get a shot just of the rocks there. That looks pretty darn nice. This is also handheld at 220 five millimeters, which I think is the math. I'm gonna stop down a bit because it's a big landscape. There you go. A lot of versatility out of this lens. Let's go see some puffins. Oh, and what is this, you might ask? Yes, it is, in fact, a Lewis Hamilton monster. This is the ferry we're heading to. I am taking a car on a boat for the first time in my life. New things today here in Iceland. Here we go onto the boat. Wow, a double, triple decker. We're all in here together. Look at that. The autofocus of this lens has been great the autofocus backgrounds, the bokeh behind the people that I was photographing on the boat and doing some video clips of, also very happy with. The colors, the natural colors, I've uh, added my preset to all the photos you've been seeing, but you do have access to some raw files if you're interested in downloading them. But I have been very happy with the colors that have been coming off of this lens and into the Sony a7R Mark V. That was a cool tour. I broke my Lewis Hamilton Sugar Free Rockstar, the 35 to 150. As you can see, I do have an ND on the front. This is one of the Peter McKinnon uh, variable NDs plus mist. So you may notice a little, a little softness in the highlights that isn't there naturally from the lens, but I like as just an aesthetic thing. And I didn't know what I was getting myself into on this boat ride, and it turned out to be a lot more beautiful than I had anticipated. So I'm happy that I had a zoom lens because I could actually get a shot of the island. Uh, it's called the most introverted house in the world. And I think Manny Ortiz and I split it, but we're never there at the same time. Two introverted for that. Good news, got my favorite Airbnb view, which you guessed it, is a scooter in the graveyard. Lovely. So here we are in West Mayne's jar, as the locals call it. And there are about 4,300 residents on this island. Not that long ago, there was actually a volcano that erupted just over here. And uh, this coming weekend is actually the 50th anniversary since the volcano before that volcano erupted. And uh, they're having a celebration. So there's flags all around town. Sad I can't be here. Sounds like a party. We're on our way to a place called Puffin Lookout. 
and uh, there it is. Well, it's gotten a little bit windy out. You know what they say? <laughs> I don't know what they say. For a big landscape, you need a big lens. And what that means is that I actually prefer to photograph, I would say most larger landscapes, mountain scenes, typically somewhere between maybe 50 and 100. So weirdly, I, I'm fine with having a 70 to 200, but the 35 to 150 gives you so much more versatility that you can get that wide shot, but you can also zoom in and get some more details. I find with landscape photography, one of my big mistakes for a long, long time was just trying to include too much. Now I'm starting to enjoy the look of isolating elements and making smaller compositions within larger landscapes. Behind me here is another good example of why you need a bigger lens for a bigger landscape. If you took this photo at 35, it would look nice. The mountain is in the background, it, it, it's nice, but there's too much of the street, too much of the foreground. So what you want to do is you want to use the telephoto compression. You want to zoom in. So this maybe means that you drive or you walk a little bit further away and then you zoom into the scene. And when you do that, it makes the mountain in the background feel like it is closer and larger and you fill the frame with the actual scene rather than just filling most of the frame with the road in front of you. And that is one way to use this Samyang 35 to 150 to really just accentuate the earth and make it look a lot cooler. So I haven't even shot the photo yet, but you saw it. I got to go do that now. It's too windy to talk outside. I'm sorry. The Black Sand Beach is the busiest I've ever seen it, so I don't think we're gonna be doing any landscape photos today, but what I do think we might be doing is uh, photographing people as though it was an event and uh, capturing a lot of adventure pants, I hope. That's my, my goal with this. And guess what lens we'll be using? Ah yes, the Samyang 35 to 150 f2 to f2.8. I also suspect that the lighting out there is going to be not so good. So when you get bad light, this is what they also say. Bad light, make it black and white. That's not what they say, but that's what I'm saying today. Uh, let's take a walk down there and see some adventure pants. So I have some bad news regarding the adventure pants situation. It doesn't uh, seem like many people are wearing adventure pants. It might be the fact that it's, it feels like a beach day here. It's like 20 degrees Celsius. Really wanted those orange and black paneled pants. And sadly today, the Black Sand Beach did not deliver. This is also by far the clearest I've ever seen this beach here. It's a beautiful day, no waves. See all the way down there. Man, so with the failure, of adventure pants. We're now on our way to our next destination, which is not a photography destination. It is a noodle shop at the gas station in Vic. And I weirdly recommend them if you are in the Vic area. So let's go eat a noodle. Bit of a letdown. Unfortunately, not open until uh, noon, the walk shop. But we got the next best thing, which is the Icelandic hot dog. You might be saying to yourself, you come all the way to Iceland to eat a hot dog from a gas station? And my answer is yes. The Icelandic hot dog wins best hot dog in Europe quite often. And uh, that is because there are crispy and fried onions on the bottom of this hot dog, as well as remoulade and uh, brown mustard. You can also do ketchup, basically anything with the, the little hot dog guy on the bottle is a pretty good idea. I like it like this. You can just say, give me everything. 
and they'll, they'll do it all. And it is probably the most cost-effective way to uh, experience food in Iceland. So uh, let's eat this hot dog and go see some waterfalls. For waterfalls, there's two that you've seen on the internet a bunch of times, and uh, we're gonna see them both, but I'm going to go to slightly different viewpoints, which are also more convenient to park at. So you get the convenience of parking, and also you get the convenience of a slightly different shot than you've seen a hundred million times on the internet. So let's go do that. First one up, Skogafoss. Oh, and depending on where you live, Sam Yang products might be called Rokinon, but I'll put links down below. You can get them from there. That's how we do it. You click the button and you're there. Wow. Here we are at Skogafoss. I guess I'm standing directly in front of it. There it is. I'm gonna use an ND filter here. I'm going to do a five stop ND and I'm going to slow my shutter speed down to maybe one slash 30th of a second, show a little bit of movement. I'm going to also experiment and see how slow I can actually go before the IBIS of this Sony A7R Mark V uh, doesn't maintain, well, I want the water to be moving, but I want everything else to be still. So you could blend exposures. I could do one with everything still and then blend in the water moving, but I'm gonna go for a one second handheld exposure at 150 millimeters. You could get a tripod, but I'm using it for this. All right, here it is at 1 30th of a second. You know what? I can just use this. I can cheat a little bit today. I got this post. We'll go all the way down to one second. That looks pretty darn nice, I think. There's a little bit of movement in the foreground, a lot of movement on the waterfall, and I'm pretty happy with that. All right, now on to the next waterfall that you've also seen before. We're actually gonna go to the parking lot for this one, not just a random farmer's field. Although, there, is a, there are nice alternate vantage points. Don't always go for where, where it's pointing you to go. Find some other spots, but also obviously be respectful of uh, wherever you are. No transition. <laughs> Three seconds away from Skogafoss, I saw some horses crossing a river. So we're gonna go over there and safely photograph some horses crossing a river. So we got the horse crossing the river on the 35 to 150. Unfortunately, the light is still pretty garbage rat out here. And uh, black and white, I don't think we'll fix that one. Too bad that wasn't happening in Majestic golden hour, but that's what you get when you come to Iceland. <laughs> Apparently you get sunny days this time. I'm gonna photograph out this way, get a shot at 35, maybe a shot at 150. Maybe this scene is a 35. Maybe it's not a 150. We've arrived at a new waterfall. The joke is always that they have just installed this waterfall. It is a new one today. And I'm going to photograph it from the parking lot back here in the, the, the far depths. And I like this angle a lot because the hill kind of swoops in on the right and naturally frames a scene. And today, there's some purple stuff on it. And uh, I'm going to shoot a few frames at, I'm going to say half second. And they're going to be a little bit wider. So I'm going to get the purple stuff in there. I'm going to get a lot of the people, I think, and maybe we can make them disappear in Photoshop. Here's what it looks like. Here's what it looks like up close. Now it's a photo. Exciting news if you like volcanoes and eruptions. There is a new one, well, I guess it's a similar spot and a new location uh, here in Iceland now, and it's uh, the Welcome Volcano. It's the joke because you land at the airport, and as you're driving into Reykjavik, like five minutes from the airport, you start to see it off your right-hand side. And the Airbnb that I'm going to tonight is going to have a good view of it. Uh, I don't want to do the hike on day one. Uh, the parking lots are mostly closed. There's kind of a side lot that you can use, uh, but I don't really want to be the, the tourist that goes wandering out alone into a new active eruption zone. So let's go photograph it the most lazy way possible from the Airbnb. And that's my favorite photo from the day. The Samyang 35 to 150 f2 to f2.8. It is now 1.30 in the morning and that is as dark as it gets. Now I promised you something in this video. My number one secret to getting paid to travel and getting out in the world and doing cool stuff for money. Here it is. Start building your own portfolio right now for it. You don't have to come all the way to Iceland. You can start locally at home. Start building those portfolio samples. Uh, go to a restaurant, go to a hotel, build a short highlight film, something that you can offer to experiences. As someone with a camera and some photography and video skills, you have a distinct advantage above somebody that would be just considered an influencer. You don't need a following in order to do this. You just have to have samples of the things that you're gonna be creating for that company or that hotel or that experience. And it's easier to start with smaller companies where you can talk directly to the marketing director or the person that you need to be speaking to. You can also find out exactly who you wanna be talking to on a platform like LinkedIn. Put that all into a package. It's easy to transmit to somebody out there in the world because for the first number of years, 
It's going to be you reaching out to companies and not companies just randomly messaging you and offering you a vacation of a lifetime. And because of that, it is important to stay self-motivated and to get out there and just start doing the thing if you want to do the thing. And then you get to build the life of your dreams with your Sam Yang 35 to 150 F2 to F2.8. Thanks so much for joining me in Iceland with this lens. This lens will do everything for you from 35 to 150, whether it is events or it is travel content like this, and whether it is photo or video, it does a great job being a hybrid creator with you. If you're interested in picking up this lens, there are links in the description below. And if you ever do go to Iceland from North America, always sit on the right hand side of the plane on your flight back, because you sometimes fly right over Greenland and you get these really nice views. Until next time, I'm Taylor Jackson. Any questions, put them in the comments below.